Science is the most important subject that we teach in schools. But it's so freaking boring. And like I saw the hands, people like to fall asleep in science class. So I like to think of science as being a systematic look at any topic to figure out how and why it works. So let's go ahead and take a systematic look at science itself in Science of Science. But before we get into those details, I want to give you some information as to why this is important to me. What's your favorite subject? Or shout it out. OK, you're all lying. Not that many people like science. All right, well, my favorite subject is science. Uh, and so this is why it saddens me to see that people don't like science anymore. And I think I figured out why. That's science class. You go in, you get the information, do your homework, uh, bring it back into class the next day, and just repeat forever and ever. OK, uh, so now let's get into some more detail. So bear with me, because I'm going to gener generalize a lot and some kind of fast paced. But science is hard. Uh, you get into biology class, and you just have to memorize everything. DNA polymerase 1, 2, 3, helicase, ligase. And it's work that you don't want to do. You get into physics class, and they tell you, now analyze it. Not too interesting. And your science in general is a lot of nitty gritty details that you have to remember. And it gets back to biology. You just don't want to do that work. Now beyond that, science also makes you think in weird ways. Does anybody really have a concept of how tiny an atom is? Or how many atoms there are in the universe? You're lying. I see that hand. <laughs> and then you get into higher physics like quantum mechanics and special relativity. And they pretty much tell you, yeah, we don't know what reality is. We're just kind of guessing here. Uh, and it's, it's stuff you really don't want to think about. But probably the biggest reason why we don't care about science is because we don't need to care. How many of you can honestly raise your hand right now and tell me that you know how your TV, your computer, and your cell phone work? You're all lying. How many of you can tell me why it's even named a cellular phone? Okay, maybe you're, maybe you're not lying about that. Uh, and then correct me if I'm wrong, but science used to be about discovery. Some guy would go out in nature and ask why a million times until they figured out why something worked. But lately, it doesn't really seem like there's anything to discover because we're at theories so crazy where we describe the whole universe in terms of virtual particles which arbitrarily, stop it, which arbitrarily pop in and out of existence and strings that you know, I'm, I don't want to think that I'm just a bunch of strings. And when you get into uh, quantum mechanics, the great physicist Richard Feynman will tell you, I think I can safely say that nobody understands quantum mechanics. How is that for discouraging? OK, so that's what's wrong with it. How do we fix it? Two simple ways. One, put the discovery back in. Walk into chem lab and be given 20 different chemicals in solid liquid gas form with 15 different lab apparatus and be told, here's the end result. Figure out how to get there. <laughs> Walk in the physics lab. Make it more practical. Walk in the physics lab. Be given a mechanical pencil, some wire, and a battery. And be told, there was a power outage in your house. Make a light bulb. Pretty intense, right? OK, so that's how to fix it. Now, why do we need to fix it? Well, science has a bunch of different branches. And when you connect the dots between all those branches and you bring them together, you find that they pretty much describe everything in the universe, which makes our lives easier, although some AP Chem and AP Physics students may disagree. But it does make our lives easier. Try getting to work in the morning without a car. Try staying in contact without a cell phone. Try entertaining yourself without Facebook. I know I can't do it, unless I have science. Well, OK, you're cool. But it's still not the most important reason why we need science. Uh, science keeps us skeptical. It makes sure that when I say there's a giant purple invisible dragon right here, you make me prove it instead of thinking, holy crap, I want my own dragon. <laughs> now, since I can't prove there's a dragon here, there probably isn't one. At least I hope there isn't, because I'm probably in trouble. Uh, but again, not the most important reason. The most important reason why we have science is the sense of perspective we gain from it. Uh, this is from NASA's Ultra Hubble Deep Field Image Survey. And this is called the most important image ever taken, because it is so humbling. Every single point of light, minus about six points, is a galaxy in and of itself. And most of those galaxies are larger than our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Now, can you look at that image and honestly tell me that you believe we're alone at the center of the universe like we thought we were just a couple hundred years ago? Now, that's why it's called the most important image ever taken, because it is so humbling. So I'm going to leave you with that. And this quote, which I believe kind of summarizes it. Nature composes some of her loveliest poems from the microscope and the telescope. Now, I wholeheartedly believe this, and to kind of prove it, 
Let's pretend that this flask is a budding scientist, and this latent liquid that you see sitting in here is all the information that's just locked up. And who knows what will burst forth with that information when the right catalyst is added. Thank you.